Hallelujah. Deacon Gary, could you come down? You can keep playing. Could you come down for a moment before I go into what the Father will have me? Pastor Adam not wanting it to, you know, I always still find stuff in Pastor Adam's stash, even though he's no longer with Disney. Um, when I heard that you, after you had helped the Sanders move, and then you still came over to the Lord's house to clean it, I wanted to be able to give this to you as just a token of uh, how we appreciate you. Amen. And I said, this will be an added addition to your briefcase. Amen. Because those of you who don't know, Deacon Gary has a briefcase <laughs> that he carries. Amen. But by no means. Amen. I know you enjoy doing that, but we do not want you doing it by yourself. You just let people know. I know in, in the, what the Lord showed me with your heart, and, I, and he probably will say this. You don't. No, but I don't complain either if somebody volunteers to help. So y'all hear that? He's going to get the he, he's going to get it done. Amen. So he is the lead person. Amen. And I really mean this. You're you're not to come by yourself. If the church has to stay dirty because you come by yourself, you just have to stay dirty. Y'all know how I am. Amen. So but that's just Deacon Gary. Deacon Gary just going to go ahead. He's the man of few words. Of, he just going to go and do what he have to do. But by no means, you start with your deacon team and say, hey, I'm going over to clean today. And then we have other individuals um, that will be able to come in and help. I know it's probably like thorough, cleaning for me is like therapeutic. Amen. In that process. And Deacon, when the Lord showed this to me, when I went to Catholic school, uh, my um, grandfather, um, he was blessed. This was my aunt's father and because she was going to Catholic school he wanted me to go to Catholic school and he paid for me to be able to go to go to Catholic school because you had to pay in order to go to school and there was a gentleman that I just admired and his name was Mr. Abraham I never forget and I always respected him he was really up up of an age and his you know sometimes children can be sort of he was like the janitor type person and I remember him because he always had all these keys and even over the time of the years the Lord would speak to me about show me about the keys. When he started talking about the keys of the kingdom, he began to show me that you got to remember that everything that happened in your life, God will use it. Okay? So that's how he was able to show me when I, because I didn't know a lot of it, but I came to the kingdom of God. But when I ran across the scripture about being having the keys to the kingdom, he said, remember Brother Abraham with all those keys? He said, that's what it's like when I said you have the keys to the kingdom. And I was able to register that until I ever got a greater understanding in Revelation. And he would stand there and his job, his only, his job was that all of us little rowdy little children, that when you ate your food, you had to bring it up. He had a big trash can. He would take your tray, dump it, and he, would, and he wouldn't say many words. But I would be real kind to him because some of the other children just seen him as just, he just a man that take the tray. But he was so faithful at just doing that. And he it stayed with me. So sometimes we think the most, hum, the, the humblest, most, the jobs, the, the working behind the scenes, God sees them more richer than anything else than standing out front. Amen. So we just, well, I just wanted to give that to you as a, as a, as a token to add to your uh, briefcase. You got something you want to say? I just want to say I'm the lead person at this till Deacon Dale comes back. because I'm sure he's watching. That was actually his ministry. And I've just been trying to take up the slack while he's gone. So, I, you know, that's just, I just want to let him know that that was Deacon Dale's ministry. And I'm... <laughs> He don't want to take no credit. You can see. Yes. He, he said, you know, Deacon Dale probably be coming. You know, he's sitting here pretty fine saying, right, 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 right. <laughs> and even better that uh, Brother Gary said, I'll gladly give it back. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You know, and, and that's the purpose of us having a well. You know, God wants you to be in the house of God. You can't have, we have those that's from Panama, of course, they can't be here. But so God, at least a greater anointing. If they tap into that, Deacon Dale is going, this is going through his stirring healing. So he's able to watch on the way of different ones, but not just to you missing church, just to miss church. Amen. He says, don't forsake the assembly of the, of the saints. Amen. So he knows that things come up. So then therefore, that's the reason why Pastor Adam and Justin want to make sure that you have an opportunity to be able to still receive from what God is doing. 
by going to the well. Hallelujah. I'm going to just need you to put your listening, your listening ears on as I read. And this is so fitting because when Pastor Alan was talking about the Holy Spirit, amen, this is what God gave me in my devotional um, a couple of days ago. And he said, I want you to read this, but I didn't see where it was going to fit in at. And then he came back and said, well, Sunday is going to be a prophetic flow. And then I hope her passed out. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And then I was just was telling you about the Holy Spirit. So I want you to listen up to this reading. And some of you guys are going to relate to this. It says, the Holy Spirit is weird. Perhaps our visitors, who's probably not used to a, an environment like this, this will sum all this up for you. It says, the Holy Spirit is the most unique person of the Godhead. So when we talk about Godhead, that's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, okay? So if we would just get this, these are things that are not going to change. If you will learn this, you don't have to feel like you're strange outside of the body of Christ or that somebody else know more than you. If you would just understand that we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he, that's what? The Godhead, okay? And the only part of the Trinity that is operating in the earth today, okay? When God, in the beginning, said God created the heavens and the earth and all that, God was doing things. He worked in the Old Testament. God was behind all of that. And then it came, and then Jesus, what? He came in the form of a man. He represented himself through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. He walked the earth. Amen. So then it was what? The Father, that was the Son that we see. He did miracles, signs, and wonders, and all that stuff. But then he went on, did his assignment, what he was supposed to do. He went to the cross so that you will have a way to be able to come before the father he knew what his assignment was amen and then that his dispensation is over it says what that he is what seated at the right hand of god are you are you with me i mean i'm getting ready to break i'm, I'm just getting ready you almost have to go to theology school where i'm getting ready to give you amen so he's seated at the right hand of god all right but in the days of then when acts came amen when jesus left he told his homeboys amen he told them and the sisters girls that was there he said listen just wait don't do nothing just get i'm somebody i'm, I'm getting ready to release something in the earth that's going to impact everything you know it, it's a game changer amen his name is the holy spirit the holy ghost and in the day in acts 2 that's what took place took a shifting and this transformation and so it is the Holy Spirit that is in, that is functioning right now in the earth. Are, are we understanding? I, I know we say God, God's behind it. And we call the name of Jesus. Jesus' name makes it happen. But the man that's on the scene, that's functioning, operating in the earth is the Holy Spirit. Amen. You want to get acquainted with him. No, no, no relationship with the Holy Spirit, you're, you're not going to mount up to much. You can have religion, you can have church, but you, wanna, you want the Holy Spirit to be your friend. You want to become acquainted with him. Uh, let me just say, instead of laying in the bed with a man, you want to lay down with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Because when the man gone, the Holy Spirit will still be there. Oh, I'm preaching real good. And it says, and God is on his throne, and Jesus, look, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm reading this right here. I just told y'all this. And God is on his throne, and Jesus is sitting right next to him, chilling. Since Acts 2, it has been the Holy Spirit's dispensation to fill us and to do incredible things through our lives. Do we get that? The Holy Spirit wants to do incredible, say that, incredible things. How about some of my little people in the room when they got to see the Incredibles? They were doing all kind of stuff, but the Incredibles don't have nothing on the incredible things that God wants you to do through your life. Hallelujah. Some incredible things that he wants to do through your life. The problem is that a large majority of Christians say you, look at your neighbor say you, a Christmas, Christians want nothing to do, Bishop, with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to sit right there with that. I, I'm going I'm I'm to sit right there. I'm going to just chill with that right there. 
The average person don't want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I'm going to clear this up for you. Nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. And if they want him at all, it is only in extremely limited scenarios. How is that possible? How is that the only part of the Godhead operating in the earth today that is the one part of the Godhead that most people don't want to be bothered with? Oh, we'll call on God. We love to call on the name of Jesus. But what about the Holy Spirit? It's easy. The Holy Spirit is weird. <laughs> Does the Bible say I take the foolish thing of this world to conform the wise? Why? Because you can't figure out the Holy Spirit. You can't intellectualize the Holy Spirit. You can't just get a book and just lock him in a box. That is the reason why. You can't exegese the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes, I said it. The Holy Spirit is weird. The definition of weird is involving or suggesting the supernatural, unearthly, or uncanny. You know, some women, you don't want to get knocked out on the floor. You don't want your wig to come off. You don't want to cry because you don't want your eyelashes you just paid $300 for. See, the whole, you, don't, you don't really want to encounter with the Holy Spirit because he'll wreck you. Hey, if you're going to go all natural, let it be. I went all natural because I want some more of the Holy Spirit. If that's a good reason to go natural, you ain't got to worry about your hair. You ain't got to worry about your eyelashes. You ain't got to worry about your fingernails. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let me would have been all natural. Don't have to get no perm and all that stuff. Shoot. That's why I wear my hair up. Glory be to God. It said the Holy Spirit is weird, it's supernatural, unearthly, uncanny. He is unusual. He prompts you to do things that are uncomfortable. Amen? He prompts you to say things that make no sense. Sometimes. Amen? He gives you boldness to stand when you should sit. Some of y'all need the Holy Spirit. Get up. Stop being walked over. Stop being a push over. Why? You need some Holy Spirit. You need the boldness of the Holy Spirit. The power, it was like, I remember sitting in, a, in I had read it about Jeremiah, but I was in a meeting one time and all of a sudden I stood in my field in the room with nothing and I said, it's like fire, shut up in my bones. The Holy Spirit, he'll know when you need to make, when you need to stand. When you're standing for righteousness, when you're standing for injustice, you're not standing alone. God, I'm going in the power of the Holy Ghost. I stood against judges. I stood against police. I stood up in courtroom. Well, it wasn't just me. I was standing for unrighteousness. It was because I had the power of the Holy Ghost. I did not credit that I was a woman. The Holy Ghost doesn't care anything about your outer appearance. If we will understand that and read in the book of Joel 2, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Shout out religious men and women, remember of God. God did not bound us. He said, there is no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female. You are a spirit. In the name of Jesus. Sit your religious self down, reading about things about putting women in bondage. Talking about a woman cannot speak. Because you misinterpreting the word of God. If that's the case, he would have had men around here with big bellies and let them, let them carry Jesus. But he did not. He chose a woman. I think I got this from Pastor Adam. I'm going to give him credit for this one. Next time I say it, it's mine. You mean to tell me he, you, Jesus put, came in the form of a woman, walked, was in a woman for nine months, 
The woman birthed them, took care of Jesus, and you mean to tell me then God gonna turn around and say, a woman can't say nothing? I can drop the mic. Hey, don't and do that. I can that. pay for it. Don't do that. When I was over at the Shockley's, amen, Bishop Shockley was like, don't drop the mic. Don't drop the mic. I said, Bishop, I said, if I drop it, I can pay for it. They said, woo, dang. So I, I had to do an invitation drop to my head. I did like this. <laughs> hey, I put it back. I put it back. Hallelujah. You said, I want the Holy Spirit. So, yes, he, he, he's unusual. He prompts you to do things that are uncomfortable. He trying to get you to get self out of you. Amen. He prompts you to say things that make no sense. He gives you bones to stand when you should sit. Faith to believe when you should doubt. Grace to forgive when you should be grudged. The truth is that many people are embarrassed by the Holy Spirit's personality. If you belong to God, did he not say that you was going to be peculiar? Hallelujah. You're going to be peculiar. You're not supposed to look like the world. Hallelujah. You're supposed to, most people with the Holy Spirit, they have the joy, joys, and the happy, happy. They, yes, you smile and hallelujah. People should think you should be crying or what have you. Because he's called the Holy Spirit. He's not called the holy man. He's not called the holy woman. He is a spirit. Your flesh doesn't mean don't bother him. When you read the word of God, he bypassed your flesh. He bypassed your soul. And God is speaking to the spirit that was within a man or a woman. It has nothing to do with you. Hallelujah. I think it was Apostle, Apostle Horton's, uh, was it Apostle Horton? That said, this uh, Apostle, uh, Apostle Wright, and he says, when you get a rebuke, no, it was Apostle Wright. He said, when you get a rebuke, he said, the Holy Spirit be like, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad they got that rebuke. <laughs> I'm so glad, I'm so glad they got a rebuke. Because what God said, he only chasing those that he loves. What we going to understand about that? I'm not talking about somebody being abusive to you. I'm not talking about somebody taking advantage of you. You know that your little hand need to be corrected. And then you're going to get mad because somebody corrected you. Yo, you ain't let your mama do it. You ain't listen to your daddy. So God bring a holy man, a woman of God, who got the boldness to stand up and look at you eyeball to eyeball and face to face and do not get moved by what you look like. You think I like giving out rebukes? No, I do not. <laughs> no, I do not. Hallelujah. Look at he told me I like it. Now you just acting foolish. That ain't a rebuke. I'm just gonna tell you about yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> what they say, stupid is and what stupid does. <laughs> Say, I want the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It says, the truth is many people are embarrassed by the Holy Spirit's personality. We want to control him. We don't like the fact that he is weird. Because if he, because if he is weird and he is not and he is in us, then we will be weird. And who wants that? I do. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is weird, but he is not crazy. Now, let, let me, okay, let me just, let me just break this down. He's not trying to embarrass you. He is trying to embolden you. If you could just get over, if we can get over our need to be in control of every single detail of our lives, we might find that the Holy Spirit completely knows how to lead and guide us, even if his actions seem a bit weird. 
Come on, think about it. When you really listen to the Holy Spirit, and oh, you, you, you didn't know then, you was like, this voice had told me, so he said, don't go this way, don't go that way. Or, or go do this particular thing. And you end up coming out with an outcome that was a blessing for somebody else or even a blessing for yourself. I shared when I did the offering over there that I was clean, I was packing and the Lord told me to go get this particular outfit to take. And I, I just could have picked up with already on the hanger, but he said, try it on. I said, well, I said, maybe he knows something. Maybe, maybe make sure I can see this can fit. So I went ahead and tried it on and I felt some crinkle in my pocket and I went to dig in there. It was a $50 bill. I had not worn that outfit in over a year. But I found the 50, I found the $50 that was in there. That was the $50 that I saw when I went to the event on Saturday. But then I was teasing them on the phone. I said, well, let me get off. I was talking with Kiara and I said, well, let me get off this phone. I said, I'm getting ready to find some more money so I can find some more money. I went to go pick up my little black purse with the cross that your demons hated. That's how we got started with deliverance. I picked it up and I'm like, oh, because normally I clean my purse. I haven't told that person in a while. I go to dig in there. I found my lipstick that I had on right now. I was looking for that lipstick. And $15. I sent another text. I just found $15 more. Dollars. Power of your words. What, I was, what did I say to them? I said, let me get off the phone so I can find some more money. Your words are powerful. What you put, see, I've been at this so long. You see, it's like accelerating. When you work on the power of your words, then you begin to speak positive words. It don't take long for the angels to say, lead it to the right direction. Just move it. Walking in love. You ain't got to go back and repent. You just own it. You just keep the switch of faith turned on. You can speak it and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, this is what I need. And I come and agree with the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. I live above and not beneath in the name of Jesus. Lord, I need, I need some money for this light bill in the name of Jesus. I need favor with God. I need favor with man in the name of Jesus. I'm going to come in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Listen, where this book at? See, some of y'all in here. Come, come help me out, son. Come help me out. Give me that bag right there. Now I see why. I was like, Lord, why you told me to get that bag? What is going to come in at? Repent this prayer for negative words and confession. No, not that bag. I want the other bag. That's a good bag. Negative words, repentance prayer for negative words and confessions. Pull the books out there. Pull the show me. Yeah, hold them up. Stay right here. See, you, you, you don't know how to be a, you're supposed to be acting like a white banner right now. Come on now. <laughs> Do I need to call Rochelle to come down here? <laughs> Introduction to repentance. Prayer for negative words and confession. It's in this book. Listen, sit down right here for a minute, son. Sit right there. There is... I got this, I, I had a vision long ago that I said I had a backpack and I had these books in there. It was a spiritual warfare vision. I did not think about it until Sweets came in and I said, you know what, since you're buying four books or what have you, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a free backpack. And when she put them in there, she put them on her back, the vision flashed back to me. So you can get four of these books for $40. And we need a pen to put in here, Kiara. And a pen for $40. So this is volume one. The book that I'm showing you right now, volume one is for your personal life. There's no reason for you to be a lazy Christian. There's no reason. No one in this congregation cannot walk at the same level that Pastor Adam and I walk at or any of the other intercessors. What? I've been using these same books since 2005. They tested, tried and true. I didn't try to put nothing else in the bookstore. This is what I've been using. Teaching you how to pray the word. You don't even have to think. Pray the word. You have kids version, but they all gone. For your young children. 
for your adult children, gotta visit that. For your parents, for your husband, for your wife, for a troubled marriage. Prayer from Psalms 91, it's already laid out. For directions and instructions. Stop walking around being angry. Pray when you are angry. Power over lust and sexual sin. You just want to be a little nasty something. Get to the word. And if that's, if that's not strong enough, go on over here to the demon route book. Generational sexual sin is broken and destroyed. Open up your mouth. Demons move by you opening up your mouth. They don't care about you speaking in tongues. Glory be to God. And then this one right here, this is for y'all have intercessors. Prayers of, of you, I posted Kiara book. It was so raggedy, y'all. It was so raggedy. Did you get another one? I'm going to buy you one because that book's so raggedy. I re, let me, I'm going to buy it. That book's so raggedy, Lord, have mercy. I, almost, I mean, I almost think the paper and stuff on there. But that's the type of, that's the type. It, you, it, it works. It's your book. Highlight in it. Look, prayers for financial blessings. I just happened to turn to that page. God is trying to speak to y'all. What Pastor Adam just stood up and said. Prayers for your, your U.S. economy. Prayer for the political atmosphere in America. Prayer for the celebrities. Prayers for the athletes. I mean everything. Prayer for Israel. Passover prayer for deliverance. So the devil can... Pass on over. But if you don't take the opportunity to do this, you're going to live like a defeated Christian. And I want all y'all, I don't know how many more I got in the bookstore, for y'all custom family members and friends, releasing them demonic spirits in your atmosphere. Let me help you. In the book, but I have never, let me tell you, I have never read this book. But I know from dealing in the era of deliverance, that demonic spirits are attached with words of profanity. Okay? So you want God to bless you when you're cursing your own self. Go ahead and repent. Repent! Don't be looking at me looking all like that in the spirit realm. I'm talking to them the devils in the spirit realm. Say, Lord, forgive me. In the name of Jesus. We don't walk in condemnation. Say, Lord, forgive me in the name of Jesus for using profanity. Help me. Cleanse my mouth in the name of Jesus. I cast down negative words spoken out of my mouth and the mouths of others. I make them null, void, and of no effect in my life and the life of others. Holy Spirit, convict me when I speak negative words, when I speak profanity. I need help in that area. My mouth is a weapon by the Holy Ghost. It is a faith machine in action. Cleanse it, purify it, in Jesus' name. Amen. I start talking about prophetic, y'all little demons. Y'all start getting all low in the spirit and all that. I can see in the spirit. There's no condemnation to those that love Christ Jesus. We make this harder. Just say, I don't want to do that. Hallelujah. I grew up, and I, I, I grew up, I was in high school, you know, I didn't grow up in church, and we just, I, my grandma's always buying me nice little clothes, and I'd be like, man, I got some bad, mm -mm, this, I got some bad, mm -mm, that. The first thing that went when I confessed Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I stopped cussing. That's basic 101. The next thing happened, I stopped going to the nightclub. And after that, it was really nothing else for me to do. Amen, because I've always been a good-hearted type person because I was raised by my grandmother. Amen. And then the only scripture I had a problem with in the Bible, y'all want to know what scripture I had a problem with in the Bible? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, because I still was a powerhouse. 
you did something to me, I was going to get you back. That's what I thought. I was, my daddy is a black belt. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. My grandmother taught me. I, I went to Catholic school. They wanted to pick on us because we wore uniforms. And I had to walk through the poker bean projects. So I had to fight. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> so one day, y'all don't do this now. One day, my grandmother found me outside the backyard. And she found me. And I had them made, got socks and put rocks in them. And tied a knot in them. And I had them made it for me and my friends that we had to walk to, to the Catholic school. Because I was going, and you know how I got that? I heard my grandmother, see, I, I was raised, I was sitting and listening to all the stories. I heard my grandmother say that they, that's what they did back in the day. So I said, if it worked for them, it's going to work for me. <laughs> so my grandmother said, girl, if you don't give me that, you're going to mess my kid. Once again, I wouldn't have been here because I would have knocked some child upside the head with that sack of rocks. Cling, cling. God's sovereignty watching over me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I grew up till I was age 25 just reading the book of Psalms. I wasn't reading nothing else. So is there any reason why I'm a warrior? You, I didn't have to have no degree. If you would read the word of God, it would get down in the inside of you. I would read Psalms 35 and then put grease on my face and then go outside to fight. And by the time I got out there, they didn't want to fight no more. The word was fighting. But I was going to do what I knew. I, did. I went to the word first. <laughs> At least I'm going to have God on my side. <laughs> then I went in action. No, y'all want to just fight. David will always ask the Lord, do I fight or not? You got to know what battles to pick and choose. Amen? So some of you put that in the bookstore. So some of you need to get, need to get, volume two is the one that talks about negative words and confession. It prays for your church. It prays for the children. Even if you got a disagreement on a job, all that is in here. See the bookstore. What else I got? And this, I just threw this so Jessica, they can pick out of any four of these books for $40, they can get this, okay? Any these five books. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So the, the Holy Spirit loves the Word. Amen? So, weird is, weird is right. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's face it. We are pretty terrible at living our lives. Actually, we suck at it. It is only when we are spirit-led that we find ourselves living the way God intended. Weird is right. Crazy is wrong. Remember, there's a difference. Weird, not crazy. The Holy Spirit has been falsely accused of being crazy over the last 30 years by hyper-emotional, over-agitated in the Pentecostal slash charismatic church. You know, they come with all these little type of movements. You know, why is it that most people, you know, especially when people have mental illness, they want to contribute because they have this God complex. And so people mix that up with, okay, okay, if that's what serving, what God looks like, oh no, I don't want that. Some of that stuff is straight up foolishness. And you have a right to be freaked out by <laughs> Even with all that being said, I wouldn't allow a few crazy people to distance me from the work of the Spirit in my life. Amen? Don't allow a, a, a few people that got it wrong to cause you not to receive the Holy Spirit or cause you. Here, here's the big issue that took place in the body of Christ many years ago. People said that speaking in tongues was of the devil. You know who said it? The devil. 
Because when you speak in tongues, the devil don't know what you're saying. Y'all hear me, visitors? You hear me? When you speak with a prayer language, the devil don't know what you're saying. Amen? It is your appropriate language. It is your God language that goes directly to God. Hallelujah. So then he, he slipped that in on the body of Christ, and so he kept people down. He kept people bound because now people, you had Christians saying that the people that speak in tongues was of the devil. Where only the devil was like, hey, hey, I get to stay. Hey, hey, I get to stay. Because I don't speak in no, because you ain't speaking no tongues. And you wonder why you were sitting in church for 20 years with no power. But say, all oh, that's corrected. Some of that stuff is straight up foolish. And when you write to be freaked out by that, even with all that being said, I wouldn't allow a few crazy people to distance me from the work of the Spirit in my life. Let's stand to our feet. Thank you for being with us a little bit over. We had to do a lot of work. When you, and, and see, here's the thing. When you have the prophetic flow and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to move, no, you're not getting out of church on time. And definitely not no 45 minutes. Hallelujah. You don't been in bondage and some stuff and you want to tell the Holy Spirit, get me out in 45 minutes. Hallelujah. So you have a question. Everybody ask your, find somebody you don't know. Real quick, I'm going to do evangelism real quick. Find somebody you don't know. Go find somebody you don't know me, you, you, that you did not come to church with. Find somebody you didn't come to church with. Find somebody you did not come to church with. Okay. Everybody have somebody? Hey. Say, if you die today, are you sure at 100% that you will go to heaven? Let them answer. Okay, there's some, there's some people that really is, is taking this in. So there's some people that are not sure. So now you lead them to Jesus Christ. Say, Heavenly Father, I, forget, I, I repent of my sins, known and unknown. Satan, I destroy your works in my life. Holy Spirit, come into my life and live your life through me. I don't only want you to live in me. I want you to come upon me by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Teach me to walk in holiness and if I have any strongholds, help me to be delivered. In Jesus' name, I am covered afresh by the blood of Jesus. I decree that Jesus is Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put those hands together. Now, the other question that we all need to answer, amen, so now you are in the kingdom of God. Now, the next step that some of you, you need to find a good church home to get into. Amen? Hallelujah. So now, let's, let's wrap this up. Have you considered the Holy Spirit to be weird? Have you been resistant to him? Come, you got to make a decision. Have you been resistant to him because you do not understand him? Confess any negative feelings about him to the Lord. Come on, come on. Confess any negative feelings you have had about the Holy Spirit to the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I have been resistant. You know, I did not understand some things. Come on, this is personally with you. Not with each other, personally with you. Personally talk to the Lord. Make up your mind to obey the Holy Spirit 
even when his prompting seem uncomfortable to you. Pray for an added dose. Here's the prayer. I pray for an added dose of faith as you step out and follow the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, I receive an added dose of faith as I step out and follow the Spirit. Hallelujah.